G'day guys, a student of mine is having trouble with this physics question, so I thought I'd make a video and work through it. So we have a 200 gram block of lead at 80 degrees, which is placed in an insulated container of 500 grams of water at 20 degrees. What is the final temperature of the combination when they reach thermal equilibrium? Assume no heat is lost to the surroundings. Okay, so basically what we're going to have here is we're going to have a object with a greater temperature put in an, into water which is of a lower temperature and the temperature of the water is going to rise and the temperature of the lead obviously is going to have to fall. So because of this assumption that we make in the question we can come up with the following like equality. We can say that the heat that is going to be lost by the lead is going to be equal to the heat that is gained by the water. Now this will um, come in handy for when we're solving this problem a little bit later. So let's just go over the formula that we're going to need to use, specifically this heat formula. So hopefully you guys are aware that we can work out this heat in joules, which is equal to m in kilos, the mass, times the specific heat of the object, times the change in temperature. Cool. So, this change in temperature, we're going to convert, is supposed to be in Kelvin. So we're going, as you can see here, so we're going to convert both of these temperatures to Kelvin. Where's the other temperature? There. So let's just quickly do that underneath. So we have 80 degrees Celsius is going to be equal to 353K. And we have 20 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 293K. Now, because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between degrees Celsius and Kelvin, we could, we're not really interested in the um, actual degrees here. We're just interested in the change in the degrees Celsius or the change in the degrees Kelvin. So, like, it's almost irrelevant how, what we put these values as. So, let's uh, start this question. Now, getting back to this equality that we came up with just before, what we're going to do is we're going to set the um, Q of the water equal to the Q of the lead. So what we're going to see is the mass of the lead times the specific heat capacity of lead times the change in temperature of the lead. So this is for the lead side. is going to be equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of water times the change in temperature of the water. Now, so let's just, this is going to be of the lead and this is going to be of the water. So what we can do is let's enter in the information that we know and see what we have left to uh, work out. So we know that the mass of the lead in kilos is 0 0.2. The specific heat capacity of lead is equal to 129. And obviously we don't know the change in the temperature. However, we do know what the initial temperature is. So the change in temperature is going to be well, let's just quickly just write a side note here. Sorry for going off on a couple of tangents here. We can write that the change in temperature is equal to temperature final subtract temperature initial. And that's going to be our delta T. So if we call temperature final X, we can set up an equation. For this. So we're going to have temperature final, which is X. 
subtract the initial temperature, which is 353. So that's at the lead, and this has to be equal to the mass of the water, which is 0 0.5 kilos times the much larger specific heat capacity of water, 4180, times by delta T, which again, temperature final, and because it's going to be thermal equilibrium, the temperature of the water and the temperature of the lead are going to be the same. So we can say that the final temperature is going to be equal to x minus the initial temperature of the water, which is 293. Now, voila. Hopefully, you realize that because we only have one variable in this equation here, we can solve this. So let's just get straight to solving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just multiply the um, two coefficients or the mass and the specific heat by each other just to make the equation a little bit shorter and on this side we have 25.8 x minus 353 is equal to half of 4180 or 2090 in brackets x minus 293 Cool. So, like we would normally do if we were going to try and solve this, we are going to simply multiply out our brackets. So, we're going to have 25.8x minus 9107 point four is equal to 2090x. Minus, now this is going to be a big number, 612,370. Now all I'm doing here, this is not physics anymore. This is just simple uh, algebra that you would learn when you're 13, I guess, years old. So we combine our like terms on either side of the equality. So I'm going to move my uh, just my digits over to the left and I'm going to move my x values to the right and I get 612370 minus 9107.4 is equal to 2090x minus 25.8x. So what we end up with, let's just continue this up here, what we end up with is 2064.2x is equal to 603,262.6x. And then we can simply divide both sides by 2064.2 and we get an x value of 292.25. And that is going to be our temperature final. So, what we can see is because of the larger mass and the way larger specific heat capacity, if we drop an 80 degrees Celsius block of lead into half a kilo of water, it's only going to rise the water temperature by 2.2 and a quarter degrees, but it's going to lower the lead temperature by what would that be? 353 to 292, so 53 plus 7, so we've got about 60 degrees there. So you can see that because of the larger mass and the larger specific heat of the water, 
the final temperature is much closer to the temperature, the initial temperature of the water than of the lead. So basically what we did here guys is we, using the assumption that no heat is lost to the surroundings, we were able to come up with this equality here. Once we had that equality, what we could do is we could enter in the data that we have been given into this Q equals MC delta T formula here. Once we'd done that, what we could then do is we'd find out once we broke down delta T into temperature final take temperature initial, what we could do is we could find out that this entire equality only has one unknown, X. So what we then did is we just used quite basic algebra to make sure, sorry, not to make sure, to solve for X. And then that pops out our final temperature value of 292 and a quarter degrees Kelvin. So guys, I hope the video helped. I tried to go through it quickly so not to waste any of your time. So if it did help, just give it a thumbs up. Um, you know, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on maths and science all the time. But until next time, guys, um, enjoy your physics.